Washington, D.C., and I am speaking with Gwendolyn Brooks, a poet with many honors and awards to her credit and a number of books of verse and a novel. Miss Brooks, I wonder if you would tell us the names of your volumes of poetry and the name of your novel. The books of poetry are named Street in Bronzeville, Annie Allen, Bronzeville Boys and Girls, The Bean Eater, and Selected Poems. And what was the name of your novel? Maud Martha. Maud Martha. Uh, which was the one uh, for which you were awarded the Pulitzer Prize? Annie Allen in 1950. 1950. And was uh, that poem uh, related to your life at the time? Well, I can say that all of my works refer to uh, various aspects of my life, but not, uh, not specifically. Uh, you did grow up in Chicago, did you not, where you now live? Yes, I did. And so, of course, your work would reflect uh, the surroundings of your own life. Yes, yes, they're they're uh, they're very city busy works. Mm -hmm. Now I believe that you started to write as a very young child. Yes, I was seven. So says my mother. She says that Do I you remember any? <laughs> Do you or she remember? Any lines that you wrote at that early age? No, I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a shame. No, I don't. Well, what was your first uh, published poem? I believe that was when you were in high school. Well, let's see. Let's see. I was 13 at the time that uh, uh, a children's magazine, American Childhood, accepted a poem called Eventide. That was my first. Do you still oh, have that? In a large do I have that? Yeah, do you keep a copy of that? I have it buried here somewhere, but I can't remember it either. Uh, reading about your life, I see that uh, you had uh, literature in your home as a child. Yes, we had many books. We had the Harvard classes, we had poetry, individual volumes of poetry and essays which my brother and I read. Do you recall any writers you felt were of particular value to you as you were developing your own creative writing? Yes, I sent poems to James Weldon Johnson and showed poems to Langston Hughes when he spoke here in Chicago, and they both encouraged me. Uh, James Weldon Johnson suggested first that I read more modern poetry than I was reading at the time. And what modern poetry did you then uh, read? Oh, I began um, reading in T.S. Eliot and uh, uh, John Crow Ransom, Robert Penn Warren, such people as so. those. Do you find that uh, you read poetry today? of the uh, younger generation? Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. In fact, I work with some of the younger poets here in Chicago, those very fiery young men and women who believe in writing street poetry. Speak poetry? Street. Street poetry. Uh, do you street think you could, could you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, uh, these are... Um, Young blacks, as they prefer to call themselves, they don't like the word Negro. And they are very fierce with uh, race pride. They want to speak to other blacks. They want to, to uh, awaken an awareness or, or develop an awareness of, uh, of uh, black importance in their fellows. And that's the kind of poetry and fiction that they're writing. I wonder, in their writing of poetry uh, particularly, do they write within established poetic techniques or 
do they uh, take a freer attitude towards structure than free by all means they they have a contempt for the forms and for well for anything that uh, is uh, seems to them white sounded Caucasian sound so of course all of their poetry is written in free verse the freest of free verse are these uh, some of these uh, young writer students in your creative writing classes? Uh, we meet once a month, and I see them during the month too individually. No, this is not a regular creative writing class. I have creative writing classes in colleges here. Uh, what do you think the tendency is among the students in your classes? What is their attitude towards poetry? They like it when it is uh, given to them on, a, on, on an individual basis, when they are able to, to uh, write it in a very personal way. They keep telling me that poetry has always seemed like something that should be enthroned, but I try to get them to understand that it's a very familiar thing and that it's a huggable thing. Do you feel... I'm sorry. Uh, do you feel that uh, you can re help these young people to bring out their impulses and their talent in this? By way? telling them most urgently to be themselves, that they to to free free their interior. <laughs> well, I think that's perhaps good advice for all of us. Yes. Yeah. And now I think we have a, about a minute left. I wonder if you could tell us what you are thinking of in the future in terms of your own writing. I have uh, a new book of poems coming out in August, Harper will publish it, called In the Mecca, and it's about form life in an old and very famous building uh, that was here in Chicago. It has been long since torn down, but uh, I was very much impressed with the many lives in that building. No one was ever sure just how many were there, maybe between a thousand and two thousand. And that's the life that I've tried to picture. That I'm sure we shall look forward to. And isn't there an idea of an autobiography, too, coming along? Yes, I'm working on that now, too. Yes. Well, we shall be very interested to read that indeed. Thank you very much for speaking with us, Miss Brooks. Thank you. That was Gwendolyn Brooks, distinguished poet. This is Bridget Lay, Voice of America, Washington. Thank you, Miss Brooks. All right. Shall I hang up now? Yes. All right. Goodbye. Thank you very much.